Christian Family TV is made possible by your generosity. Because of your donation today, we were able to create more than 200 plus wonderful stories on saints, stories of faith, and many other interesting videos to teach our kids. Yes, you are making a difference. We could not do what we do without you. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with, or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He smile on you and be gracious to you. Thank you, and God bless you. Many years after the time of Noah, there was a man named Abraham. He was a good man who owned many sheep and cattle. He lived with his wife Surai in the land of Haven. Abraham was a godly man who lived his life by the ways of the Lord. His only sorrow was that he didn't have any children. One day God spoke to Abraham. Abraham, leave your country and your people and go to the land I will guide you to. If you do, I will cause you to become a great nation. I will bless you and make your name famous. And you will be a blessing to many others. Ah, ah, Surai! Surai! Ah, ah, Surai! Surai! Ah, ah. What dear? Ah. 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 Surai, dear, you won't believe what I'm going to say to you. <laughs> what is it, dear? You know what? God just spoke to me. God? Yes, dear. God just spoke to me. <laughs> Can you believe that? That's wonderful, dear. What did he tell you? Hello. Oh, hello, Lord, my nephew. Why are you gasping? You seem very excited. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm very excited. Lot, God just spoke to Abraham. What? God? I... I can't believe this. Ho <laughs> ho! Yes, Lord. The mighty God just spoke to me. What did he tell you? God told me to leave our home and our country. Huh? What? But where did God want us to go? Mm, he didn't tell me that, but he said he'll keep guiding us. But dear, do you think that's a good idea to keep everything and just, just leave? Yes, how can we leave just like that? What about our house and and the flock and what about our relatives? I know this sounds this sounds crazy lot, but we must have faith in God and we must trust him. God will guide us. Mm, don't worry. I'll come with you wherever you want me to. Yes. We will do whatever you tell us to do. Abraham started out from Haran as Lot had told him to do. His wife Surai and nephew Lot went with him. They took their cattle, the sheep, horses and camels with them. They wandered through the hills and valleys for a long, long time. They ate wild fruits when they were hungry. They drank water from the streams. And when they were tired, they slept under the trees. They did not lose their faith in God and kept traveling like God told them to. And after a very long journey, they arrived in the land of Cana. Haha, we have finally arrived. Yes, dear, I need to thank God. Let me go and pray.
this is the land that I give to you and your family forever. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. But their happiness didn't last for long as it didn't rain for a long time. And a severe drought came upon the land. Abraham and his family had no other option but to move south to find food for themselves and for their animals. And they eventually reached the border of Egypt. Is this Egypt? They say that there is food further south along the river Nile and grains to be bought in the marketplace. Will the Egyptians allow us to enter their land here? I hope so. We have silver and gold to pay for everything we buy. I'm afraid, dear. What if they rob us? I'm not sure of this plan. I think we should turn back. No, no. We must enter Egypt. Otherwise, there is no hope for us. Can't you see that the animals are dying of thirst? We must do this. We understand that. But what if they are not good people and harm us? Mm. What if they get attracted by your wife? They might kill us to take her. Oh Lord, I can't let that happen. Sarai, you must stay here. I'll go and come back in a few days. No, dear. I can't think of living without you. I would rather die. I too can't live without you, Surai. We have to find a way for us to enter Egypt together. That could be dangerous, uncle. Hey, I have an idea. What if we tell them Surai is my sister? That's a brilliant idea. Yes. Then they will respect you and welcome us as her family. I think it's going to be a good plan. Come on, let's get going then. We have no time to spare. Hello. Huh? Who are you? My name is Abraham. We came from the north because we we were facing a terrible drought up there. So, what do you want me to do? We came looking for food to feed my family and the animals. We we can't trade our sheep for the food. We don't need more animals. Then we'll pay in silver, sir. What? Who who is this beauty? Me. I I'm his sister. Wow, you are such a beauty. Then <clears throat> Sir, can we finish what we were discussing about the trade, sir? Oh, that can wait. But first let me take you all to Pharaoh. I'm sure he will give you a great deal. Come with me. Oh no. It's going to be all right. God, please help me. Your Majesty. Yes. Oh, who is this woman? Tell him. Tell him your name. Ah. Mm. Your Majesty, my name is Surai. I have come from the north with my brother. We came here looking for food. Hmm. You are truly beautiful, Surai. Can I have the pleasure to invite you for a feast tonight? Ah, feast? Say yes, dear. He will get angry if you deny him. Yes, yes. I'll join you for the feast, but only if you allow my brother to join us. Of course. Of course your brother can come. 
and your whole family can join too. Thank you, Your Majesty. We are so lucky that Egypt didn't have to face the drought, and we are lucky that you and your family found your way to Egypt. You have been more than generous to us, Pharaoh. We will return to Canaan as soon as it rains. Oh yes, but if you wish, you can become citizen of Egypt and marry and have kids here. I can make you a governor with a palace of your own. Oh, Your Majesty, you are too generous, and such generosity deserves its reward. Ah, oh, what do you want me to do? You have a jewel befitting a king, a jewel I desire more than anything on this earth. What jewel do you speak of? I speak of your sister. Ah. Uh. Do you not see what a great a beauty she is? Uh, I, I don't think. Ha ha ha. I can see how honored you are that Pharaoh would take your sister as his wife. No. Yes. Yes, I'm honored. Ha ha, let's celebrate. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt had more than 20 wives, and he used to take for himself any women he liked, fearing Pharaoh's wrath, Abraham could in object. Lee and don't disturb us come to me dear mm okay but before pharaoh could touch surai he fell down with a terrible headache and his whole body was covered with burns Ah, my head! Oh, what? What is this? What? What happened? Ah, send for my doctor, quick! Ah, yes, I'll get him right away. You should not touch her. She belongs to someone else. Hmm. What? I don't believe this. Is it true, Surai? Are you anyone's woman? I, I. Tell me the truth now. Yes, Lord. I'm the wife of Abraham. I'm so sorry for lying to you. What? But, but you told me he's your brother. I'm sorry, Pharaoh. We were afraid you would kill us if we said the truth. So you lied to me. Go and get Abraham immediately. Do this to me, Abraham. I'm really sorry. When we came to Egypt, we feared we would be robbed and slain. Because of Surai, you protected me and my people. You have been gentle to us. I told Surai was my sister, but the truth is, she's actually my half sister, and yes, she's also my wife. I plead for your forgiveness. I'm in no mood to forgive. But if you God will lift this curse from us, you'll be free to leave Egypt and keep the gifts I gave you. Thank you, Pharaoh. We will leave immediately. So Abraham left Egypt with his family. They took with them much more gold and animals than they had arrived with. But trouble lay ahead as they returned to their homeland. This is the land that God promised me and my family forever. Why hasn't God granted me land of my own? Listen, when my brother Huran died, I took you into my family. Surai and I raised you as if you were our own son. I know, but there is no but. You are my family, and you share in this blessing that God has given me. Abraham's flock is always driven at the front, and they get the best grass. I know. Abraham is getting old, and look at his wife, so vain and beautiful. 
Yet she can't have any children. Yeah. I think it's time for you to take your rightful place and show him that you are his equal. I will, dear. Tomorrow I'll ask my shepherds to take my flock ahead of Abraham. Yes. You have as much as rights to this land as he does. <coughs> No, no, you have to come behind. Who are you to say that? My master told us to go in the front. No, no, my master will get angry if I tell him this. My master is no weakling. You know, my master is above yours. No, no, I won't let you. Who are you to let me? Move aside, you. Uh, how dare you push me? Hear you. Uh. Oh, yeah? That's all you've got? Lord, why did you ask your men to put your flock ahead of mine? So, why should your flock always get the best grazing? That's a good question, Lord. But you should have come to me for discussing it. Why should I come to you? If you had come to me, then our men wouldn't be fighting themselves. And now our animals are scattered all over the countryside. Uh, I didn't think about that. Of course you didn't. Come with me, Lord. Ah, this is the land that God promised me. Lord, we can't allow a split in our family. But, uh, Uncle... Listen, I have decided that we should separate our flocks and herds and we should go separate ways. No, I didn't mean to. Don't. Let me complete. Even though we'll be away from one another, we will stay close to each other. Yes. I'm sorry, Uncle. Look over there. On that side is the Valley of Jordan, and this side are the hills of Canaan. You can choose any piece of land you want, and I, I will go the other way. I think I will take the valley. Very well. May the Lord bless you and your family. Thank you. If you ever need me, just send a messenger and I will come, because you are my flesh and blood. So Abraham and Lot parted company in the promised land. Abraham took his family and animals and all his possessions and went to live near the great trees of Mumbreth near Hebron. So, did you all like this story? Yes, yes Father. Father. Who can say the name of Abraham's wife? Sarai. Abraham's wife was called Sarai. That's good, Lucy. And who can say the name of Abraham's nephew? He was called Lot. Right again. Well done, Matthew. Thank you, Father. Now who can tell me why Abraham lied to Pharaoh? I can answer that, Father. Yes, you tell me, George. Abraham had to lie to the Pharaoh because if he told the truth, then the Pharaoh would have killed him. That's correct, George. Well done. Now that's enough for today. You should take the tower you made and show it to your parents. We'll meet again tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Bye, Father. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with. Or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. Hello, Matthew. Good morning, Father. 
Why are you sitting here alone? Where is Lucy and George? Lucy is there. And George is over there. What happened? Why aren't you guys playing together? Lucy and George had a fight and they are not talking to each other. <laughs> is that so? And why did they fight with each other? Mm, we were playing hide and seek and Lucy is saying that George cheated. <laughs> mm, now go and tell them that I want to talk to them. I will tell them father. Lucy, Lucy. Lucy. Go away, Matthew. I don't want to talk to anybody. Lucy, Father John is here and he is calling you. I'm coming. All right, you go ahead. I have to call George also. George, George, Father John is calling you. Huh? Let's go then. Hey there. Good morning. Why are you silent? Aren't you going to wish me back? Good morning, Father. Matthew told me that you both had a fight. Is that right? Yes, Father. This is George, he No. Don't tell me the reason, Lucy. She's lying, Father. It was she. Stop it, George. Now listen. Whatever the reasons might be, I want you both to forgive each other and say that you were sorry. But father, Lucy, I'm sorry, George. I shouldn't have fought with you. I'm sorry too. You're my best friend, Lucy, and I'll never repeat this. <laughs> See, wasn't that easy? Thank you, father. Hmm. Now come on. Let's sit here. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Ruth, a Moabite woman. She was an excellent example of how one should trust God. Her selfless love and total dedication to her mother-in-law is depicted as an example for all generations. Wow! Tell us a story, father. All right. Now listen carefully. Long time back, in a place called Moab, there lived a woman named Naomi. Her husband had died a long time back, and now recently, her two sons too died. She was now left with the wives of her sons, Orpha and Ruth. There's no point of sitting here and crying. We can do nothing about it now. Ruth you must listen to what I'm going to tell you. What is it, mother? My daughters, you're still young. Go back to your people and marry again. You can have children of your own one day. Mother, what are you saying? No, Ruth. Stop. You must do what I say. I'm going back to Bethlehem and you can't come with me. But... Why can't I come to Bethlehem with you? Because you're a Moabite woman and in Israel, you'll always be a foreigner, my dear. Orpha, will you at least listen to me? I will do whatever you wish me to do. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Now, Ruth, please. Mother, please don't insist. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you die, I will die. Your people shall be my people. And your God will be my God. Oh dear! Ruth 
both refuse to part her mother and they both travel together to Bethlehem. Do you see that mountain, Ruth? That one? Yes, that's Nebo. It was from there that Moses viewed Canaan. Nebo? Hmm, poor Moses. Why did you say that, mother? Oh, that. That's because after leading all the Israelites from Egypt, he died there. He died at the threshold of the promised land. The God of Israel is a God of the poor. He will not abandon me. While they were traveling, Naomi narrated the history of Israel to Ruth. And after many days of traveling, they finally reached Naomi's house in Bethlehem. Hey, look! Who are they? Hmm, I think I've seen that face before. Hmm, isn't that Naomi? Yes, it's her. Come on! Naomi! Naomi, it's you! Naomi! You look so different! Yes, it's been so long since you left. Where is Elimelech and your sons? What happened, Naomi? No, don't call me that anymore. Don't call me Naomi. My life has become like this ruined house. I had everything when I left here, but I have come back empty-handed. I am no more Naomi, the happy one. I will be called Mara, the sorrowful from now on. Don't worry Naomi, it will be alright. <sighs> but the God hasn't abandoned me totally. He has left me with her, the wife of my son. She is a good woman. May God bless you. For many days, their neighbors helped them by giving food to eat. Mother! <laughs> Truth? What is it? How long are we going to live on this charity? Yes, our neighbors are kind, but we mustn't burden them. Mother, I was thinking. What, dear? I was thinking that I can go and work somewhere. What? Yes, mother. Look, I'm healthy and I can work. But dear, I can't bear that. Listen to me, mother. This is harvest season and I can go into the fields and glean. No, I can't bear to see my daughter glean in a stranger's land. But why should we be ashamed? You have told me that our God is the God of poor. That's right. But they might insult you calling you a foreigner. Mother, don't worry. I shall return by evening. God, father of orphans and protector of widows, please watch over my daughter. And that day, Ruth went to work in the fields. She started collecting the leftover ears of corn. Ah, it is scorching and I am thirsty. Where can I get some water? The field that Ruth chose to work that day was owned by Boaz, a relative of Naomi. 
On that day, Boaz came to the field to oversee the reaping. Who is that young woman? Oh, her. Do you remember your aunt Naomi? Naomi? Wife of Elimelech. Yes, that young woman is the daughter-in-law of Naomi. She has me permission to glean in your field and I allowed. Hmm, they are poor widows. She hasn't taken any break all day. Hmm, I remember Naomi. She was a good woman and she was tried very hard. What's your name? Ah, uh, me? Yes, you come here. Yes, master. What's your name? My name is Ruth. I am wife of Naomi's son. I know. I am a relative of Naomi. Oh. You don't have to go anywhere else for gleaning. No one will bother you here. You may drink water from my servant's drawer. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. But what have I done to deserve this? You? You left everything and came here with your mother-in-law? Come with me. We'll have something to eat. Here, have this. Hmm, this is such delicious bread. Thank you. I'm glad you like it. Can I take this bread to my mother? She will like this very much. Of course you can. Thank you. Boaz liked Ruth very much and he decided to help her. You pull a few ears of corn from the bundle and let them fall down. Let Ruth collect those. You have a good heart, Master. Lord God, protector of the weak, wonderful are your ways. Ruth, how was your day? And... And... How did you get so much grain? Ah... Uh, mother... Lord led me into the field of a man called Boaz, a very generous man. Did you, did you say Boaz? <laughs> yes, he told me he was a relative of yours. Yes, he is my nephew, my cousin's son. He was so kind, he gave me a lot of bread and roasted grains too. Thank you God. He also allowed me to glean in his field till the end of the harvest season. That's wonderful. Mother, let's give some bread and grains to our neighbor, Lady Maka. Yes, she is a kind woman and she helped us so much. Until the end of harvest season, Ruth gleaned in the fields of Boaz. She gleaned during the day and at night, she sewed clothes for the poor. Hmm. Let's go to bed, dear. You've been working all day. You go ahead, mother. I will finish this one and join you. But Ruth, look at you. You look so tired. Don't worry, mother. I will join you. Besides, tomorrow we are having the harvest feast. Boaz has invited me to. 
Really? You must wear your best clothes and don't forget to put on your ornaments too. <laughs> I will, mother. Now you go ahead and sleep. This is big. Ha ha ha. Huh? This is the biggest harvest we had had in years. God has blessed us. God has been generous to you because you have been generous to poor people. Isn't that? Isn't that Ruth? Ruth? Where? I can't see her. Look at the front. No. I can't. Her? Huh? It is her. She is so beautiful. Yes, I too didn't realize that. Poor woman though. She has a good heart. She works all day and then she sews clothes for the poor. Hmm. I must pay a visit to her mother tomorrow. And the next day, Boaz came to Naomi's house. Good heavens. Boaz, my nephew. Hello, aunt. It's so good to see you. I I I am ashamed to receive you in this poor shack. Oh, aunt. The condition of this house doesn't matter at all as long as you are happy. Happiness? That is not for me. I I lost everything. Everything except this daughter whom Don't worry. I'm here to talk about that daughter. Huh? What about Ruth? I uh, I wanted to talk to you first. Um I like to marry Ruth but only if you have no objection Lord you have heard my prayer what do you say Oh Boaz we will be honored but but what you know as per our custom my brother's son is the next of the kin Your brother's son who Sikri hmm yes As long as Sikri gives away his right, you cannot marry Ruth. Hmm. I didn't think about that. I'm sorry, Boaz. I want you to marry Ruth. I really do. But Hmm. I have to think about this. Don't worry, aunt. I'll talk to Sikri and figure out a solution. The next day, Boaz gathered Sikri and 10 elders at the city gate. Everyone the widow of Elimelak is selling a piece of land Sikri you are the next of their kin you are entitled to buy it Do you want to buy it Yes I will buy the land from Elimelak's widow And as you buy the land you are bound to marry her daughter-in-law She is a more abite woman You must marry her and restore her late husband's name. What? Are you joking? Are you saying that I should marry a Gentile woman? A foreigner? Yes, that is the law of Israel. If you buy the land, then you will have to marry her. Huh? No. No, I don't want the land. Huh? What? Are you giving up your right? Yes, I am. I don't want to marry a Moabite woman. Then you must swear it. Sikri, you must renounce your right in our custom. Give your shoe to Boaz. All right. Here. I hereby renounce my right to buy Naomi's land. 
and as a sign, I am giving my shoes to Boaz. We hereby proclaim Boaz as the legitimate heir of Naomi's property. Boaz's plan worked and Sikri renounced his rights. After a few days, Boaz married Ruth. According to the law of Moses and Israel, I accept you, Ruth, as my wife. I shall be faithful to you until death. May the God of Israel look kindly upon you. May you be honored in Israel through your descendants. Ruth and Boaz had a son, and they named him Obed. And Obed's son, Jesse, was the father of King David. That was a great story, father. Yes, father, we loved it. Hmm, now shall I ask you a few questions from the story then? Yes, father. Why did Naomi and Ruth go back to Bethlehem? Naomi's husband had died a long time ago and she lost her sons too. Naomi and Ruth had no one else in Moab and that's why she left to her hometown. Excellent, George. And was Ruth born in Bethlehem too? No, father. Ruth was born in Moab and she was a Moabite. Good, Lucy. Now tell me why Naomi changed her name. Naomi meant the happy one. When Naomi lost her husband and her sons, she decided to change her name to Mara, which meant the sorrowful one. Right again, George. Now tell me how Boaz and Naomi were related. Boaz was Naomi's nephew. That was quick, Matthew. Good one. Hmm. Now tell me why Sikri refused to marry Ruth. Sikri did not want to marry a Gentile woman widow and that's why he let go of his right for Naomi's land. That's right again. And for the last question, how was King David and Ruth related? Boaz and Ruth had a son named Obed who was the grandfather of King David. That's correct, George. It's time for us to leave. Father, what story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Tomorrow? Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you the story of Samuel tomorrow, my child. Ah, the story of Samuel? Yes, the story of Samuel. We will meet again tomorrow. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. Hey George, hey. What? I think you have got one. Huh? Pull the rod when I say. Pull the rod, pull it. Woohoo, look at that. Look at the fish I've caught, yeah. Wow George, that's a big one. This is so big. <laughs> I think we have got enough for the day. Now let's take it home and ask your mom to cook it for us. Mom is going to be so happy today. Alright, I will hold the fish. You pack your things and let's walk back. Father, in the class yesterday, you told us that Hosea experienced the pain of loving as God did. Why did you say that? Mm, that's because... Hey! Do you want to hear the story of Hosea as we walk back home? Yes, father. Tell us the story, please. All right. Now listen carefully. Hosea was the last prophet sent to Israel. 
He was a man who experienced the depth of God's love and the bitterness of betrayal. He lived at a time when the country was in a total mess. All the evils that Amos had warned the people of Israel about had now become widespread and was common everywhere. Murder and robbery had become very common. Poor were forced into slavery. Priests and judges, instead of teaching the laws, got greedy for profit and encouraged corruption. And against the commandments, God and the idol of Baal were worshipped in the same altar. One day at the palace, people were celebrating the coronation of Prince Zachariah, the people. O oh Lord Baal, Lord of fertility, accept our offerings and bless us. Huh, I can't watch this anymore. Prophet de blame, why don't you say anything against this cruelty? I, I'm an old man. What can I do? Hosea, I'm heartbroken. Why are you crying, Master? Do you see that woman dancing over there? Wow, she's such a beauty. But, but she's a prostitute. What about her? She? Huh? She's my daughter, Hosea. What? But how? How did she end up like that? The king and the priests are forcing all the beautiful women in the country into prostitution. She, she had no choice. And I could do nothing to help her. Oh no! Don't worry, Master. Everything is going to be all right. Hosea, I want you to do me a favor. Can you? What is it, Master? Can you take her away from this place? Take her with you. Save her, please. Hosea didn't know what to say that day. But he sure knew what to do the next day because that night, the very same night Prophet Diblaim asked him to rescue his daughter, God appeared to Hosea. Hosea. Huh? God? Hosea, go and marry the prostitute. Israel has become a prostitute by abandoning me. I will do as you say, my lord. Hosea was a firm follower of God. And the next day, he went to the temple to meet Goma, the daughter of Prophet Diblaim. Shh! 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 Goma! Huh? Goma, here! Who are you? I will tell you. Come with me to the gardens. All right. You go ahead. I have seen you before. You are priest from Samaria, isn't it? No, I'm neither a priest of Baal and I'm not from Samaria. Then who are you? My name is Hosea and I'm from Jezreel. Why are you here, Hosea? You, you are so beautiful. What are you staring at? Tell me why you are here. Listen to me very carefully. Goma, I love you. Love me? Ha! I'm the temple dancer. I don't care about that. I love you so much and I want you to come with me. But what? What are you saying? But don't you know that I'm a temple dancer? I'm a prostitute. I know, Goma. And I also know who made you like this. Those wretched priests and the king. Don't worry. God sees everything. No, it can't be. I have no life of my own. My life is ruined. Goma, Goma, listen. I have your father's blessings. Huh? Yes, let's get out of here. We will go to Jezreel, my home. Nobody will be able to find us there. No, it can't be. I have to go now. They'll be looking for me. Don't worry about that, Goma. Before they realize you are missing, we will be gone. You want to leave right now? Yes, right now. Come with me. I have a host ready. But, but I have to say a word to my father. Don't worry, I have already told him. That night, both of them fled to Jezreel. Many months and years passed. 
many revolutions and war took place. Kings were killed and there were frequent change of power in Israel. The whole country was in an utter chaos. Streets were flooded with dead bodies. What Amos predicted was coming true. In the meantime, Gomer gave birth to a child. Gomer! Come on here. Take a look at our child. He is so beautiful. What are we going to call him? Have you decided on a name yet? Yes, we are going to call him Jezreel. What? Jezreel? But it's the name of a place. Yes, it was the place where Jehu the captain killed the king. I know that. But why that name for our son? Because the captain was unfaithful to his master. He should have loved him and protected him. But instead, he killed his own king. But, but... Don't worry, Goma. We Israelites have become like that captain. Instead of serving the Lord, we have turned our backs against him. Our son's name will remind us the condition of our home and the country. Hosea, please. No, Goma. I have decided. We are going to call our son Jezreel. It was God who asked Hosea to name the child Jezreel. The name reflected how sad Hosea was about the condition of his home. Hosea had become a very sad and grave man. He always prayed to God and was very serious all the time. Hey, look! It's Hosea! Yes! Hosea! Hosea here! Huh? What is it? Come here, Hosea. Let's chat for a while. Yes, come here. You are always looking so serious. I'm sorry, but I can't. I have to go somewhere now. Why? You want to go to another temple? What's the use of praying all day? Come sit here and have fun for a change. No, I can't. Hey, did you hear the name he has kept for his firstborn son? What is it? It's Jezreel. <laughs> but it's the name of a place, isn't it? This guy is crazy. Don't worry about me. I think you should stop ignoring your true God and worship him instead of making fun of me. Are you saying that Baal is not the true God? You know it who the God of Israel is, and yet you choose to ignore him. You are now running behind idol worship. That's against God's commandments. Hey, Hosea, don't let the soldiers hear you talk like this. They will behead you if they hear you insulting our God, Baal. Yes, you can go away, my friend. We don't want to be seen along with you talking. Otherwise, we might get into trouble too. Yeah, go away. We don't want you here. All right, I'm going. People made fun of Hosea because he was always sad and serious. But Hosea was more worried about his God and his country. What Amos predicted was coming true. The kings were killing each other. A few days back, the military commander killed his own king and became the ruler of Samaria. Hosea's wife conceived and gave birth to a daughter. And that night... Hosea... God? Call her name, Loruhama, for I will no longer have mercy on the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. I will, Lord. Loruhama. Mother! <laughs> Come here, son. Look at your baby sister. Wow, she's so beautiful. <laughs> Isn't she? Daddy. Dear. My husband. She is really beautiful. We are going to call her Loruhama. What? No. I'm not going to name her that. We are going to call her Sara. No, we can't. You have to agree with me, my dear. But Loruhama? But why do you want to call her that? It's God's wish, my dear. It means no mercy. No mercy? Yes, 
God want the people of Israel to know that he will show no mercy on them. He want them to know that they would get the punishment they deserved. Hosea obeyed God's commands without a question. And in few years Gomer gave birth to a second son. Call his name Loami, for you are not my people, and I will not be your god. Hey Hosea, what is it? I heard that you named your second son Loami. Yes, I did. Hosea, this is the strangest name we have ever heard. Why don't you call your boys Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob, or some respectable name like other folks? Hey, what do you mean by not my people? That's what God commanded me to do, and every time I call my child by that name, it reminds how the people of Israel pushed away our Lord God. It reminds me that we are no longer His people. <laughs> you are crazy, my friend. You should stop being so serious. It's because you are a loner that you keep getting such thoughts. So what do you want me to do? Go with you to your temples and worship Baal, or do you want me to join you for drinking and wasting away my life? Hey, you need to stop worrying, my friend. There's nothing wrong with having a little fun sometime. No, I'm sorry, but I can't forget the Lord and ignore His commandments. One night, while he was sleeping, he had a dream. A vulture appeared in his dream, and he started following it. What? A vulture? A vulture over the house of Lord? What does it mean? Hosea, the people of Israel have broken my covenant. I am going to punish them according to the covenant. I will start with the priest who defiled my temple. You must go to Samaria immediately. The next day morning, Hosea left for Samaria as God commanded. Do you have to really go? You know I have to, dear. I must follow God's orders. But then what am I going to do with these three little kids? Daddy, how can I resist God's call? I don't understand you. I think I think you're sick. Otherwise, how can your God be more important than your wife and children? Don't worry. You have enough to live. And besides, the neighbors are good too. They will take care of you. But uh... trust in God and wait in patience. I will be back soon. Huh. In a way, I'm happy that he's gone. Nobody can put up with his strange ways. He's always so sad. I am fed up with this life. I used to have such a fantastic time. We had so much fun. Oh, I really miss those days. I should have never left the temple. After a few days since Hosea left his house, a soldier from Samaria came to Hosea's house. Who are you? Hello, Goma. Don't you recognize me? Huh? You know my name? I know you. Uh, you are, uh, you you are Simri. My goodness! <laughs> so you haven't forgotten me? How can I ever forget you? We used to have such a good time. Yes, we did. Come, come inside. Here, Simri, drink this water. Thank you. So tell me. What's the news in Samaria? Oh, it's been really dull since you left the temple. The new girls are not as good as you. Hmm, I miss those days. And your husband, Hosea? What about him? He is crazy. He is going around and cursing everyone like a madman. How can you live with a person like that? Why don't you come with me? I'm tired of him. I would love to come with you. That day, Gomma left Hosea's house and went with that soldier. She was so cruel that she sold her children at the slave market and went on to live with that soldier. In the meantime, the rulers of Israel were planning to attack Judah and they were marching towards Jerusalem. The priests in the temple were offering sacrifices to ensure their victory over Judah. O oh God Almighty, Please bless and strengthen our army marching against Judah. Stop it! Huh? Hosea, 
It's you? What's the matter? Judah is our brother and they are begging for peace. Are you offering sacrifices to destroy our own people? It's the king's order. We offer sacrifices for the good of the people. You offer your sacrifices to this peace made in gold. You forcefully take what belongs to poor. Hosea, watch your words. Don't you remember what happened to Amos? I am not afraid. You consider the prophets mad and you silence them. And now you are threatening me. The day of the disaster is here. Get out of here. Guards, take him away. Leave me. Ugh. You defile the country with your crimes. The fire of God's wrath is coming from the north. It will purify this land. My house. What happened? It's all gone. What happened here? My wife, my children, where have they all gone? Hey, is it you, Hosea? Yes. Do you know what happened to my wife and children? Hosea, I'm so sorry to tell you this. After you left, your wife stayed around for a while. But one day, a soldier from Samaria came and she left with him. Goma, why did you? And my children, what happened to my children? Oh, Hosea, I didn't realize that Goma was so cruel. She sold her children in the slave market and she enjoyed with the money she got. She stayed with that soldier for two months. But then he got bored with her and he left her. Oh no! I heard she's a slave now somewhere. I'm sorry, Hosea. You must try to forget her. Oh, Goma. How could you be so cruel? How could you forget me after I saved you from that temple? You don't know how to be a faithful wife. And our children, how could you do that to them? Hosea was heartbroken. The person he loved the most had left him. He now truly understood the pain of God. He understood how it felt like when someone you loved turned their backs on you. Oh no, my kids, my darling. No, I'm not going to let her go. I'm not going to rest until I find you. You are mine. I'm coming for you. Hosea traveled for many days searching for Goma. He didn't rest and he went under a lot of pain. And one day, he finally learned that she was working at a house in Bethel as a slave. Hello, sir. Who are you? My name is Hosea. I heard that my wife Goma is working here. What? <laughs> so Gomer has a husband? I can't believe it. You may laugh as much as you want, sir, but I want my wife back. All right, all right. You can have her. No problem. But you will have to pay me. I'm ready to pay you. How much do you want? Give me 50 shekels of silver and I'll let her go. Hosea paid for Gomer's release and he released Gomer. Gomer! My husband! Dear, you're looking so miserable. I'm so sorry. I should have never left you. Come with me, dear, and never leave me again. No, I, I don't deserve such love. Don't say that. Our life is a symbol of Israel. All these happen to us so that the world can understand what Israel's sin is and our Lord's love for us. I have been taught a great lesson today. Israel is like an unfaithful woman. She went after other gods and idols, but our Lord will never abandon her. Even as I love you, in spite of all your sins, so does God love all His people in spite of their wickedness. So he learned the lesson that even when God is greatly displeased at us, He loves us and when we return to Him, He will receive us. Wow! Wow! And what about their children? Did he get them back? Yes, he bought them back from the slave market and he got them home. That was a great story, father. You liked it? Yes. All right. Mm, this fish looks quite tasty. I'm hungry. I'm gonna start eating. No, no, wait. Let's finish with the questions and then we'll start, okay? Yes, father. All right. Now tell me who was Gomer's father? 
Goma was the daughter of Prophet Dibli. That's correct. What was the name of Hosea's children? Lucy, can you tell me the name of his first son? Hosea's first son was named Jezreel. And why was he named that? Hosea named him after the place named Jezreel where Jehu, the captain, killed his own king. That's correct, Lucy. And now, George, you tell me the name of his daughter. Hosea named his daughter Lo Ruhma, which meant no pity. That's correct, George. Can you also name his second son? His second son was named Lo Ami, which meant not my people. That's very good. That's all for today. We can start with the food now. Father, which story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Oh, yes. I will tell you the story of a farmer who rose to protest against the violence and injustice. The story of Mika. Now, let's stop talking and concentrate on the food now. I'm hungry too. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with. Or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos. Are there any more stories about Daniel you told us yesterday? Of course. There are so many. Do you want to hear another one? Yes, yes father. father. All right. Listen carefully. In the last episode, we saw how Daniel was put into the lion's den because he worshipped the God of Israelites. While he was in the den, an angel appeared and saved Daniel. King Darius realized that Daniel's God was the one true God and he instructed everyone in the empire to worship him. Daniel was rewarded with many gifts and the king appointed him as one of the main advisor in his council. Daniel's wisdom grew famous among the empire and many people came to seek his advice. It was during this time that there lived a man called Jochim. Jochim was very rich and he was also a kind man. He was considered wise and was liked by everyone. In those days, the court hearings were held at his house. What is your complaint? You may speak in front of the judges. Sir, I had borrowed 100 shekels from this moneylender last year. But now he's saying that I have to pay him 500 shekels back. We are very poor and we could not manage that much money. When we failed to repay, his men came and evicted us from our own house. Please give me justice, sir. He is lying, sir. He had borrowed 500 shekels from me last year. Here, I have the proof with me. No, I did not. I don't know to read and write. And he cheated me. May I see the document? Sure, sir. Hmm. What do you say, Jochem? Is he telling the truth? No, sir. This document is forged. The farmer is telling the truth and this man is lying. Then we must punish the money lender. No! You must give back his property immediately and you shall be sentenced to prison for three years for violating the law. Gods! Arrest him! No, please! Thank you, sir. I got justice because of you. Don't thank me. It's God who saved you. Now go in peace, my brother. The judges heeded the advice of Jochem and justice was served to everyone. Jochem had a wife and her name was Susanna. She was a firm follower of Lord God and a devoted wife. They lived happily with their three little children. Father! Oh, there is my youngest son. Did you miss me, you little one? You look so tired today, dear. Yes, Susanna. 
It's been a long day. The number of complaints are increasing every day. Here, drink some water. When are the new judges coming here? Oh, I forgot about that. The new judges will start coming from tomorrow. I hope they are honest and kind to the people. I hope that too. Many lives are dependent on these judges. But the two new judges elected that year were wicked men with no fear of God. Hmm. Joe Kim looks like a very rich man. Look at his house. He must be taking a lot of bribes. Otherwise, how can he be so rich? Whether he takes bribe or not, we should not let him stop us from taking the bribes. How can he stop us? Don't forget that we are the judges. <laughs> Catch me if you can. Ha <laughs> ha. I will just see. Excuse me? Are you joking? Yes, I am. And you must be the newly elected judges. Yes, we are. That's great. We were waiting for you. Come, please be seated. Stop playing and come inside, children. Father has work to do. Wow, look at her. She is such a beauty. Oh, I forgot to introduce my wife. Her name is Susanna and these are my children. Susanna, which means Lily. Nice name. You are beautiful like a lily too. Thank you. I'll leave you now. You can start with your work. Joking? You are a lucky man to have such a beautiful wife. It's all his blessing. This man borrowed 200 pieces of silver by pledging his land. It's been more than two years now and he is not returning the money. Nor is he allowing us to confiscate his property. Sir, there was no harvest last year because of the famine. Everybody knows about it. If he takes away my house, then my family will have nowhere to live. All I'm asking is to give me one more year to pay the debt. Please, sir, please give me justice. Sir, I think we should give him some more time to repay the debt. What? One more year? He already had enough time to repay. Yes. We must rule in favor of the money lender. But sir... No buts, that's our decision. You are free to confiscate his property. And you, you poor soul, you should repay your debts in time. Now go away. No, please. Take him away. This is unfair. Gods will never forgive you. How much did the money lender pay us to rule in his favor? Hundred silver. <laughs> we will soon be very rich. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, hmm. I'm a little tired now. I will come back in some time. Come back soon. We have many complaints today. I will be back in a few moments. What happened, dear? Why are you looking so upset? Those judges, they... What happened? They are so corrupt. I saw them taking money from the money lender and they ruled in his favor. They crossed the life of a poor man and his family. What am I supposed to do now? Hmm. Don't worry, dear. God will take care of it. Susanna had a habit of taking a walk in a garden after everybody had left. That evening, as usual, she went out with her maid. Why do you take this walk every evening? Hmm. It's a big relief to spend a few moments silently in this garden. That's why. But the judges hadn't left and they saw Susanna walking in the garden. She is beautiful. She is amazing. What? Did you say something? What? No, I, I did not. Did you say something? No, it's time to leave. I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Huh. 
Huh? Did he go? Hmm, he's gone. Now I can watch her all by myself. Huh? What is that? You? You? You didn't leave? Yes, I. Uh, I was. But what are you doing there? You tell me first why you came back. There is something going on. Hmm. If you promise to tell me the truth, then I shall tell you my reason. All right, all right. We have done so much together. And why should I hide the truth now? I was standing here to watch Susanna, wife of Joe Kim. <laughs> Honestly, that was my plan too. Ever since I saw her, I just can't keep her out of my mind. Same here with me. <laughs> it seems that she takes this walk every day without fail. Then we shall come every day too. <laughs> <laughs> the judges made this a habit. Every day when Susanna comes out of her walk, the judges hide nearby and watch her. As days passed, their passion for Susanna became uncontrollable. They started making devious plans to achieve what they desired. One day as usual, Susanna came into the garden. There she is! It's so hot today. I think I'll take a bath in this pond. Would you please go and get my things? Yes, madam. And hey! Don't forget to lock the gates when you leave. I will, madam. When the servant left, the judges came out from the hiding. Come quick. This is the best chance we will ever get. But what if she won't agree? How can she? We will threaten her and force her. Don't forget that we are the judges and we can do anything. Hmm. You are right. Let's go to her. Huh? Honorable judges? How come you are here? And that too at this hour? We don't have any time to chat with you. Give yourself to us just for a little while. We shall leave before your servant comes back. What are you saying? Don't you know that's a sin? Don't teach us about right and wrong. We know all about that. Come on, just this time. No, never. I will not. It's against God and my husband. It is wrong. Don't you know who we are? We will destroy you and your family if you don't agree. First we'll charge false accusations on you and then we will kill you. And after that, we'll kill your whole family too. Don't you want to save yourself? Your husband Joachim seems to be a kind man. No. God, help me. No God is coming to rescue you. Say yes to our demand and you shall live. It is a sin to be with you. And if I refuse, then you're going to kill me. God, I place myself in your hands. Please save me. You are still refusing? Come with me. We'll show her what we can do. Please God. Please help me and my family. As Susanna cried aloud, the servants assembled outside the gates of the garden. The judges opened the gates and came out. They started telling a false story to accuse Susanna. You dirty woman! We now know what kind of a woman you are. What's the matter? What happened to you, madam? We shall explain that tomorrow during the hearing. Now go and lock her up till the hearing starts. The judges decided to accuse Susanna of a crime she did not commit. There were many people outside Joe Kim's house eager to know what had happened. Yesterday afternoon, when we were walking in the garden, we saw your wife Susanna with a young man. Huh? I was with him in the garden and I saw that too. She was standing with a man under a tree and embracing him. No, that's a lie. Shut up, let us finish. 
When we reached near where they were standing, the young man saw us. He panicked. He pushed us aside and ran away. We thought you were a pious woman. But she's a sinner. According to the law of Moses, she should be stoned to death. But sir, I know my wife. She's a pure woman. There must be some misunderstanding. Are you saying that our eyesight is poor? We saw them and it was as clear as daylight. Now take her away and prepare her for her punishment. No, sir, please. Gods! All that you said is a big lie. You give false witness and then you judge? May the Lord protect me. Mother, please don't go away. I don't believe it. There is something wrong. I know Susanna. And she is as pure as her name. She would never do anything wrong. People knew that Susanna was pure and has done nothing wrong. But the judges had given their orders and it had to be executed. With much reluctance and sorrow, people took Susanna outside the city gate to be stoned. But God was going to protect her. Our plan worked. She will die now and no one will know what we did. That was a brilliant plan. Oh no, I don't know what to do now. I'm sorry dear. I never thought those judges could be so cruel. It's not your fault dear. Don't worry and trust in God. Everything is happening as per his plans. Hey, look over there. Who's that? That's Daniel, isn't it? Why is he blocking our way? Hey, look, it's Daniel. I hope he will do something to save our madam. Daniel! Huh? What is he doing here? Daniel, what are you doing here? Move aside and allow us to go. Israelite! How foolish are you to condemn an innocent woman to death? And that too, without a proper trial? What are you saying? We gave her a trial and found her guilty. Everyone, return to the court. These men have given false evidence against her. I will prove that. Everyone... Come with me to the court. How dare you accuse us like that? If what you are saying is the truth, then you can prove it in the court. I will be questioning you individually to test if what you said is the truth. You go and sit in the other room. I will call you once I'm finished with him. But? Just obey him, otherwise people will know that we lied. Alright, I will go. Now, you tell me, tell me what happened in the garden. Yesterday afternoon, we were walking in the garden when we saw her with a young man. They were standing under a tree, and when we approached them, the young man pushed us aside and ran away. Hmm. Now tell me, under what tree did you see them? Huh? Hmm. Uh, I saw them standing under the oak tree. Yes, it was an oak tree. Oak tree, is it? You have heard what he said. I will now call the other judge. You can go now. Send the other judge. Tell me what happened yesterday. How many times do I have to say that? Just tell us one more time to prove that you were telling the truth. Hmm, all right. Both of us were taking a walk in the garden yesterday afternoon as usual. Suddenly, we heard some sound and when we looked there, we saw that Susanna was embracing a young man under a tree. We were. Can you tell me under what tree were they standing? Huh? I... I think 
It was that mastic tree. Yes, it was that mastic tree. Liar! Huh? Liar! Liar! You wicked sons of the devil. The other judge told us that you saw them under the oak tree. And now you say that it was a different tree. We know now that you are liars. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. How many maidens were abused by you? When Susanna resisted, you decided to kill her. Liars! Liars! Kill, kill them! them! Kill, kill them! Release her! Take these men instead and punish them! Mother! Oh my child! The judges were taken outside the city gates and they got the punishment they deserved. God will never abandon those who trust in Him. Susanna, I am proud of you. You chose to die rather than to sin. You are a role model for all. May God bless you. Praise and glory to the Lord who heard the cries of the innocent. Thank you for saving me, Lord. How can I thank you? I will sing your praises for the rest of my life. And that's how Daniel saved the life of Susanna and her family. That was an amazing story, Father. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Father, are you going to ask us any questions today? Yes. Are you ready? Yes, yes Father. Father. All right. Now tell me what does the name Susanna mean? The name Susanna means Lily. That's correct, Matthew. And who was Susanna's husband? It was Joachim. Correct. And tell me how Daniel proved the innocence of Susanna when she was blamed of committing a sin. He called the judges separately and asked them to name the tree where they saw Susanna. When both of them named different trees, Daniel knew that they were lying. Excellent, George. That's all for today. I will come back tomorrow and tell you the story of Esther. Thank you, Father. We want to remind you again to take a Patreon subscription. It only costs $2 to start with, or make a one-time donation starting at $5. This will help us continue making these videos.